Hi everybody, I'm Steve and I'm here in Hollywood, California today at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And I'm here at the very famous Columbarium that's located right behind the chapel that you see straight ahead. It's the building with the beautiful dome on the top. To find it, you just come in through the front gates and make the first right-hand turn. And then it's on the right-hand side, just past the gift shop and the restrooms. And if you're lucky like I was, one or more of the many peacocks that roam around the cemetery will lead the way. The entrance to the columbarium is a little bit hard to find. It's just to the left or the west side of the chapel. You walk down the sidewalk where you then enter on the right hand side. So there's the street right there. And right behind me is the entrance to the columbarium. You just enter through the gates here to the right and then you walk straight ahead down the corridor until you come to another set of doors which will take you into the circular two-story columbarium. Okay, so the sun is just rising. It's a little after uh, 7, 7.30. And even though I've been coming here since the 1980s, this is the very first time I've been in a columbarium that's attached to the chapel. It's hard to believe, I know, but there's just so much to see here. There's so many people to, to visit and so many people to find and see that after 40 years of visiting, I still haven't made it to all of the famous graves here. And for those of you who are wondering, my visit here was filmed a little over a year ago. For the most part, I am still staying at home just like everyone else due to the pandemic. So I'm lucky that I have many hours of film footage that I still haven't shared with you. The first thing you see when you come through the doors on the ground floor of this columbarium rotunda, which was built in the 1920s, is this 1928 statue called Morning, Noon and Night. The plaque says the sculptor's model was the acclaimed actress Louise Fazenda. Her career began in early silent comedies for Max Sennett and Universal Joker Unit. She appeared in 147 films, including Mike and Jake at the Beach in 1913, Gold Diggers of 1923, and her last film was Old Maid in 1939. She married famed producer Hal Wallace, who gave us many classics such as Casablanca and Yankee Doodle Dandy in 1942 and they had one adopted son. Do any of you remember Louise Fazenda? I have to be honest, I don't. But I'm really glad to see that her memory and the memory of many other old Hollywood stars are being preserved here in this columbarium. As I've said many times before, cemeteries really are like museums. And right behind her memorial statue is the niche of cinematographer Greg Toland. Toland was the cinematographer for Citizen Kane, The Best Years of Our Lives, The Grapes of Wrath, and many other classic films. He was nominated for six Academy Awards and won for the film Wuthering Heights. Sadly, he died in his sleep at the very young age of 44 from a coronary thrombosis. I'm not exactly sure how many famous people have their cremated remains interred here. And I didn't do a lot of research before my visit because I was really coming just to see one final resting place here. And that's the niche of Jerry Siegel, who is co-creator of the Superman comics. After seeing his showcase niche, I figured I would just walk around and see how many other famous niches I might be able to discover. As it turned out, I stumbled upon nearly a dozen. So let's head upstairs and I'll show them to you. And in case you're wondering, Joe Schuster, the co-creator of Superman, died in Los Angeles at the age of 78 on July 30th, 1992. He was cremated and the whereabouts of his ashes are unknown at this time. Hopefully one day his ashes will have a place like this for his fans to visit. The first famous niche that you come to at the top of the stairs on the left hand side belongs to movie and TV actress Francine York. She appeared in dozens of movies and dozens of TV shows during her career, and fans will probably remember her for her roles in a number of Jerry Lewis films. And I believe that this picture of her and Elvis is from the 1965 movie Tickle Me. On TV, she appeared in popular shows like Batman, My Favorite Martian, Perry Mason, Lost in Space, and many others. She died from cancer in Van Nuys, California at the age of 78 on January 6, 2017. Classic movie film buffs will recognize the name Betty Lasky as the daughter of Jesse Lasky, the pioneering film producer who founded Paramount Pictures, which is located right next door to the cemetery. 
They'll also recognize the name Jesse Lasky Jr. He was a writer who wrote more than 50 screenplays during his career, including the screenplays for the Cecil B. DeMille classics Samson and Delilah and The Ten Commandments. The brother and sister are interred here together, while their parents are interred in crypts in the Abbey of the Psalms, also here in this cemetery. Betty was also a writer, and one of her best-known books was the history of RKO Pictures. RKO produced the film classics Citizen Kane and King Kong. Betty Lasky died in Hollywood from pneumonia at the age of 94 on January 7, 2017. Betty Lasky Jr. died at the age of 77 in London on April 11, 1988. And I think it's also interesting to note that actress Faye Ray, who starred in King Kong, and Cecil B. DeMille are both also buried in the cemetery. The niche of actor Tom Irish is located right here near the center of the columbarium. And this is a picture of him in a scene with Elizabeth Taylor. He made his film debut in the 1950 movie Father of the Bride, which is now a movie classic. Sorry that I'm moving the camera around so much, but I'm trying to find an angle that doesn't have a lot of glare. I really like these niches in the glass showcase displays, but they're very difficult to film. Irish died in Manteca, California at the age of 80 on December 14, 2010. And on the wall to the right of his final resting place is the niche of actress Anne Sheridan. Back in the 1930s, Sheridan was known as the oomph girl. She was voted the actress with the most oomph, or sex appeal, in America. She appeared in around 75 films, alongside some of the biggest names in Hollywood at the time, and many of those movies are now considered classics. Sheridan died in Los Angeles at the young age of 51 from gastroesophageal cancer on January 21st, 1967. And not far away is the niche of another young actress who also died before her time. The death of actress and fashion model Lana Clarkson made international headline news in 2003. Clarkson was shot and killed inside the home of legendary record producer Phil Spector. The sensational trial seemed to go on for years, but he was eventually charged with second-degree murder and convicted on April 13, 2009. Clarkson appeared in more than a dozen movies, including Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and made more than a dozen TV show appearances on popular shows such as Three's Company, Knight Rider, and The Love Boat. She died in Alhambra, California at the age of 40 on February 3, 2003. And here's the final resting place that I actually came here to see today. Writer Jerry Siegel, who was the co-creator of the character Superman. The cartoon character was first published in 1938. The character was immediately popular and went on over the years to become a cultural icon. Siegel died in Los Angeles on January 28, 1996. His wife Joanne died at the age of 93 in Santa Monica, California on February 14, 2011. So I don't know if you can read this. The glare is pretty bad, but it says Joanne Carter Siegel original artist model for the character Lois Lane in Superman. Gutsy, determined, eternally beautiful, and loved. Of all the different variations of Superman over the decades, my favorite is probably still the original 1950s TV show, The Adventures of Superman. How about you? I was just getting ready to leave and I walked back over here. I, I don't know why, but I almost missed the niche of Madeline Pugh Davis, co-creator and co-writer of I Love Lucy Show. I'm so glad I just happened to walk back over here. There's so much glare on the glass here. I'm going to try to get a couple of different angles here. So, okay, let me go this way. Davis was a screenwriter best known for her collaboration with Bob Carroll Jr., whom she met while they were both staff writers at CBS. They first contributed to the radio program My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball, which evolved into the TV series I Love Lucy. Pugh and Carol ended up working together for 50 years. And who remembers that Superman, played by George Reeves, was on the I Love Lucy show back in 1957. Davis died in Bel Air, California at the age of 90 on April 20th, 2011. Bob Carroll Jr. died in Los Angeles at the age of 88 on January 27, 2007. Sadly, his Find a Grave memorial page says that his burial is unknown. 
This week, I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporter, Terry Forrester. And I'd like to thank John Akers and Michael Haley, two existing Patreon supporters who both recently increased their pledges. Thanks so much, Terry, John, and Michael, for helping to make these trips possible. And I also want to thank all of you who have subscribed and have helped this channel to grow. Until our next trip down memory lane together, happy travels, everyone.